The salmon run is short, lasting from the middle of May until the middle of August, and every means is taken to catch as many fish as possible. Purse seine fishing. The lookout spots the salmon, and the small boat moves away, carrying the purse seine behind it. Floats at the top and lead weights at the bottom form a wall of netting suspended in the water. Salmon are sociable fish and travel in schools. The long seine intercepts the school. The crew of the big boat throw leaded lines and drive plungers into the water to keep the salmon headed toward the net. Then the small boat circles back with the far end of the net in tow thus enclosing the fish on all sides. And now, lines that are threaded through rings in the bottom of the net are drawn in, closing up the bottom as strings close a lady's purse. Of the three major commercial fishing methods, trolling is the only one that makes no use of nets, depending instead on hooks and line. Hooks are baited for Chinook or Coho, the most likely of the five salmon species to strike a lure. Herring strips are frequently used for bait, but every troll fisherman has his own theory of what the salmon like. Plugs of every description appear each year, and often theories are discarded in mid-season as the fishermen try one lure and then another. A silver flasher is a frequent competitor for attention. Whatever the bait, an outrigger takes the line and the slow trolling begins. It ends with the strike and the line is drawn in by hand. A single fish instead of a netful, but well worth the troller's time when it goes to market. As the trollers trail their lures, other net fishermen exploit the salmon's return to the freshwater streams of their birth. Gill nets, set to drift with existing currents, intercept the fish as they head upstream. Their wide mesh permits the smaller ones to pass through, but ensnares the gills of the larger fish, trapping them as the nets are drawn in. I can't describe how exciting it is to see a fish or, you know, a hundred fish or 170,000 pounds of fish. It's just, it's thrilling. There was a ton of fish. Uh, I remember, I remember having like great seasons up here. Like, I don't know, we'd, we'd fish five days a week. We were tired from fishing and, and, you know, caught lots. Lately it appears there's been many bad years in a row and it's really affecting who is and or if anybody wants to get into the fishery. The confidence levels I would suggest are low which lent, led me to start to think about getting out. This year, I think this year was uh, one of the worst I've ever heard. It was probably overall for salmon it was probably the worst. It's sadness. You're out there and you're wondering why there's no fish. Um, I mean, he, even the whales seem depressed. You're around and they're, I mean, they're around working their, their tack. They're trying to catch some fish too. It's, it's wild out there. You can, you can sense the mood of all nature at times. And uh, sometimes it's absolutely depressing. It's the seals, it's the sea lions, it's the global warming, it's the sports fishermen, it's the upriver First Nations, it's, yeah. Uh, it's the commercial guys. The commercial sport fishermen 
have been railing against the commercial fishery, which in turn makes the commercial fishery want to rail against the commercial sport fishery. Commercial fishermen fish a quota. Let's say it was 500 springs this year. Let's just say it was 500 springs. One boat, yeah. But charter fishermen <clears throat> this year definitely was two fish per day per guest. But do you think they stopped? Do they not have to? No. Okay. You can continue fishing and potentially killing fish for fun. The statistic is, uh, you know, 10% mortality rate on catch and release. That is 10% too much for me. If I catch 10 fish and one dies for fun, I, I can't handle that. That's, that's like littering to me. It's just disgusting. I've been ripping on charter guys, but I know a lot of very conscientious charter guys, and honestly, to me, they're the villain, but I know some very smart, nice ones, so it's hard to hate anybody. Mm -hmm. you know, I just hope that everybody's following the rules, and at the very least, following the rules, but the rules are shit, and you need to be more conscientious than the rules. You know, the rules are not enough. We've had rules forever, and here we are. Some of the user groups, and maybe all of them, need to uh, go with maybe a little less usage, which is a hard one. For some, some will say, well, they use more than I do and our usage is better. But I think if we're going to all continue for the great-grandchildren to see some, we should all have to give up a little. People that aren't catching fish affect fish. Don't be fooled. You don't have to put a hook in the water to impact fish. That's something to think about drive a car, anything that affects that environment, you know, you need to be conscientious of what you're doing and yeah, take a hit, big deal. Ride a bike, don't catch fish, don't litter. Whatever it is that you do that could affect fish, you should maybe come up with an alternative, figure it out, and yeah, give it up. Because if you want to catch fish, you can't just complain them back into existence. It's just not going to happen. Yeah, I would, I would like to see some good salmon come back and, and it would be a great way for my kids to get into fishing because it's, uh, you know, it's close here and, and uh, you know, it's, it's such an amazing resource. Um, yeah, I, 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 would, I would like to see some kind of opportunity anyways, instead of, you know, kind of tapering off the other way.